to take a look at the big stories, making the headlines with Nick Ferrari and Camilla Tomine. Morning, guys. Morning. Good morning. How are you, Nick? I'm very well, thank you, and getting ready to talk to you about the stories that you just had my listeners chatting, Vernon. Yeah, I would imagine it's been a busy morning, Camilla. Very much so. I'm loving Nick's hair. You're channelling you're in a Boris there. <laughs> don't bit, say that oh, to him! Oh, no, just... you didn't go there, Camilla! <laughs> don't you think you're oh, no! Oh, I've just taken my that. headphones off. I'm very sorry. <laughs> I don't know. That was bang out of all that. I don't know. I, I think there's a little bit of a resemblance, perhaps. <laughs> sorry, Nick. Uh, Speaking sorry, of sorry. Boris... Yeah, there you go. Well done, Camilla. Take us um, into it. Uh, he's been fine. He's been fine. Fifty pounds. Yeah. Uh, he had a bit of a do, which he's been denying all along since Ambushed the party with getting the blew up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's really complex, this, isn't it? Because mm. on one end of the scale, we got people who are reading the Telegraph and sort of commenting on articles saying, "Look, this is a fixed penalty notice. It's like him being given a parking ticket. He was at a party with a cake produced for twenty minutes." Haven't we got bigger things to worry about? He's the victim of a witch hunt. There's a war on in Ukraine, who cares? And then you go to the other end of the scale of speaking to people who lost their loved ones in COVID, who couldn't see them when they were dying in hospital, saying, I'm sorry, but for two members of the political elite, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor Rishi Sunak, to have broken the rules that they set and behaved as if they were above the law is like an example of rank hypocrisy at its finest. Mm. And therefore, you can understand the sort of visceral feeling about this, even though it's, you know, two years on and we're out of the doldrums of the pandemic now and kind of returning to normal. So he's not going to resign. I mean, he's going to be dragged out of Downing Street kicking and screaming, I would suggest. But I think in the long term, obviously, this is going to damage his credibility. And it's also that the police are now confirming what everyone suspected was that he's not necessarily always to be trusted. And, of course, that's politically dangerous when you've got local elections coming this summer and then a general election coming in two years' time. Now, before we get to you, Nick, I know you've got a lot to say. Let's take a look at uh, Boris's apology, shall we? Uh, today, I've received a fixed penalty notice from the Metropolitan Police relating to an event in Downing Street on the 19th of June 2020. And let me say immediately that I've paid the fine and I once again offer a full apology. I understand the anger that many will feel that I myself fell short and I accept in all sincerity that people had the right to expect better. So Nick, do you think he's accepted responsibility for his party? Josie, I do, and I think this underscores. Boris is the ultimate Marmite politician. You go in either liking the guy or loathing him and whatever it might be, and all this will do is underscore that. That apology you prayed to played a little bit from, I think it's enough for now. Within the last 10 minutes, one Conservative MP has called on me saying he has to go. I, I don't think the dam will break. I don't think there's an appetite to get rid of the Prime Minister at this time. He's just about done enough. But as Camilla referenced, there could be more done the way there's still this sue gray report so we've got the met with their inquiries we've got the sue gray report and this is a uh, someone who sits above parliament and investigates all parliamentary affairs we still don't know that now if we have another party where there was another tupperware cake and there was another packet of cheesy what's it's or whatever that could be ugly but at the moment i think he's just about ahead of the game josie well, Nick, Nick, just give us an example of what your audience has said, because your audience gives us a, a, a wide-spanning view of opinion. What, what were people saying this morning on LBC? The one thing that really shone out, Vernon, and this is what the, the great problem with the Prime Minister here, Vernon, is the personal investment. And if any of your viewers are watching now who were unable to say bye, goodbye to their grandmother or unable to say goodbye to a loved one, there's such a personal investment. This isn't like most political scandals. Uh, wallpaper gate or whatever you will, they eventually go away. This, in some cases, people were not able to say goodbye to their wives. They never actually saw them again. They weren't able to go to the cancer unit to say goodbye because they were precluded. That is the one thing that is so difficult for Boris. And it has to be said, Rishi Sunak to climb out of. Well, he did have, a, have an excuse uh, for this, which I think we've got a VT. Just have a look at this. I chaired eight meetings in number 10, including the Cabinet Committee deciding... COVID strategy. I visited a school in Hemel Hempstead, which took me out of Downing Street for over four hours. And amongst all these engagements on a day that happened to be my birthday, there was a brief gathering in the cabinet room shortly after 2pm, lasting for less than 10 minutes. And I have to say, in all frankness, at that time, it did not occur to me uh, that this might have been a breach of the rules. So, Camilla, it seems that after everything that we were told, he didn't understand his own rules and he denied and denied and denied the fact that he did have a party or a gathering because he even said it in Parliament. 
far as I'm aware, to the best of my knowledge, uh, and we have followed the rules throughout. All guidance was followed uh, completely. What I can tell you is that uh, all the guidelines were observed. There was no party and that, and that no Covid rules were broken. Look, I think everybody, I follow the rules, everybody across politics, uh, across politics uh, should follow uh, the rules. There aren't many functions where there's a cake involved that isn't a party. No. Also, I think we were so aware of the rules when those women got um, fined for having a coffee together in the open outdoors. And therefore, this idea, like recklessness, i.e. not knowing whether you've broken the rules or not, is not really a defence. I mean, there are rules. The government set them. They were broken. The bigger question here when it comes to his leadership and his judgement is why on earth was an atmosphere created in Downing Street that was different to the rest of the country? Because mm. the rest of the country were saying, we can't get together, we can't socialise, we can't go to the pub, we can't do this, we can't do that. Why in God's name, frankly, did anyone in Downing Street think it was a good idea to have the word party associated with any event at all? We all knew the difference. You know, people were going to work. I was going into the newsroom, but that was a work environment. Nobody was saying, oh, when we clock off at five, let's all go onto the roof and start drinking beers. Yeah, Nick's, Nick's, Nick's itching to get involved. Well, Vern, just to say, Camilla, you know as well as I do, there are 300-plus people for whom Downing Street is their office. It, it, it's not their home. So much as I am sure in hospitals, and God knows the nurses deserved it, did they occasionally have a slice of cake and possibly a glass of Prosecco or in the care homes or in factories if they were able to work or build? So I think they probably did. So if, if this one, if it stays with nine minutes, he walks in and they don't even get the cake out of the box, I, I do think as it is a place of work, that is an argument he can hang his hat on, Camilla. But it, Sorry, is this the first time the uh, Prime Minister has ever broken the law, Nick? Well, known to be breaking the law. No, but this is the other yeah. argument. Of, uh, for the Boris supporters, they'll be saying, all oh, right, well, are we now going to criminalise any politician that goes over the 30 miles an hour speed limit? You know, of course, politicians make mistakes. It's been a difficult week for the Tory party because we have another politician who's been found guilty of child um, sexual assault. So... Uh, <laughs> The interesting thing as well, I don't know what Nick thinks, is the Rishi Sunak factor. I mean, in a way, we weren't necessarily surprised, were we, to hear the Prime Minister being fine, but the fact that the Chancellor, after this awful week he's had with his wife's non-dom status, his green yeah. card that he had to give up last October, we've now got this. And, and interestingly, you know, it, it, Keir Starmer's asking for the Prime Minister to resign, you know, obviously, because he's been doing that for the last six months. But actually, it's Rishi Sunak's positioning that's going to affect the Prime Minister's decision-making. There were some rumours that he was close to resignation yesterday. He issues a statement but, saying he's not. But that's an interesting dynamic, well, isn't it? Good, well, I've, clearly, Vernon, Camilla hasn't heard the news. Rishi Sunak says these fines are tax-deductible. He's going to be putting it... <laughs> <laughs> put, it on, <laughs> put it on his tax return. Brilliant. All right, but just, just, just quickly, because it is politics, uh, obviously, we've been told to do one thing, politicians seem to be doing another. Does this make the divide between them and us even greater? From what you've experienced this morning uh, on, on, on the show, Nick? No, I think they've always seen it that way. I think it's always been that they, they do as they do and, do and not necessarily as they say or say as not as they do. I, I, I don't think there's a great level of surprise. The one facet that we've probably not discussed, and in a sentence, we have got this horrific war, you've got the terrible events that I think Camilla referenced, and you've got President Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, saying that of all the world leaders, it's Boris Johnson who is leading him. I do think that somehow plays considerably into the Prime Minister's favour.